Hello and welcome to another episode of CC Saturdays. My name is Prasenjit and I have a special guest with me today from Ukraine. His name is Sherry Vesilenko. Sherry is the platform software engineer at the popular app Grammarly and he is helping Grammarly solve uh, problems uh, with communications and uh, Sherry is a fan of astronomy and obviously he loves cloud and that's that's the reason he's a very good platform engineer today uh, sherry will talk about cdns and cloud front functions uh, i would like to mention here that uh, sherry is a aws community builder as well and uh, he helps communities grow and he helps uh, with uh, building technical content for various communities and uh, he's going to discuss CDNs and CloudFront functions. But before we hand over to Sherry, uh, let me just give you a brief uh, overview of the problem that is solved by uh, CloudFront functions. So we all know that CDNs um, help us uh, securely deliver data, uh, videos, uh, uh, images and applications and APIs to customers globally with low latency and high transfer speeds. Now to offer a customized experience and with the lowest possible latency, uh, modern applications execute some form of logic at edge service. So in the edge locations, you have to place this logic and not just serve the static files because modern applications have changed like e sometimes the images or videos there have to be resized depending upon the device where it is going to be consumed and so on the use cases for applying logic at the edge can be grouped into two categories the first one is um, the compute heavy operations uh, that are executed when objects are not in the cache so here, it is a fully programmable uh, serverless uh, edge cache computing environment where um, there are different types of uh, complex customizations done in order to uh, manipulate the images or videos before they are actually served. So that is one and also uh, like it reminds me uh, like this solution also helps in uh, creating url shorteners like uh, you have shortened uh, user-friendly urls uh, to f full url landing pages or uh, which are the paths uh, provided from cdns so these shorteners also can work from these edge cache locations using um, special kind of uh, edge computing environment okay the second category um, of the use cases are simple http request response manipulations that can be executed by very short-lived functions so in this case it doesn't make sense to have a complete server running all the time uh, in edge locations and you're going to spend more on that so for these use cases, you need a flexible uh, programming experience along with the performance, uh, scale and obviously cost effectiveness so that uh, it enables you to execute them on every request while uh, at the same time not having to run a server continuously. So what I'm saying is having to have a, a CDN uh, capabilities along with serverless capabilities and all of this should be on the edge so what are the solutions so sherry will explore uh, more and uh, tell us uh, about cloud front functions the problem it solves and obviously he'll also um, follow up with a short demo over to you sherry thanks for being here Thank you for the introduction, Prasenjit. I am very excited to tell you more about CloudFront functions. But before diving into the details of the CloudFront functions, let's remind ourselves how CloudFront works in general. CloudFront infrastructure consists of two main components – edge locations and regional edge caches. Edge locations are the CloudFront points of presence. 
they make sure that popular content can be served quickly to your viewers. CloudFront also has regional edge caches that bring more of your content closer to your viewers, even when the content is not popular enough to stay at the edge locations. So, a regional edge cache helps improve performance for that content. Before CloudFront functions were introduced, the only available edge function was the Lambda at Edge. Lambda at Edge is a feature of CloudFront that lets you run code closer to users of your application. How closer? As close as the regional edge cache can be. There are 13 edge cache locations around the globe. That's a great way to move your application logic closer to the users, but what if you need to move it even more closer? This is where CloudFront functions step in. You can use this new CloudFront feature to run JavaScript functions across more than 200 CloudFront edge locations in 19 cities across 47 countries. CloudFront functions is built for lightweight HTTP transformations and manipulations, allowing you to deliver richer, more personalized content with low latency to your customers. Let's review the specifications of the CloudFront functions. It supports JavaScript. You can run it on more than 200 of CloudFront Edge locations. It supports viewer request and viewer response as triggers. Its execution time is less than 1 millisecond. Its maximum memory is 2 megabytes. And the total package size, or source code size, is up to 10 kilobytes. It doesn't have network access, it doesn't have an access to file system, and cannot access to the request body. And it costs 10 cents per 1 million of invocations. So, what are the use cases of CloudFront functions? You can use them for cache key manipulations and normalization. You can use them for URL rewrites and redirects, for HTTP headers manipulations, and for access authorization. Also, you can use CloudFront functions in addition to the existing AWS Lambda at Edge capability that also allows you to run custom code in response to CloudFront events. AWS recommends continue using Lambda at Edge for computationally intensive origin request and response operations like server-side rendering or image optimizations. So, let's see CloudFront actions in live. For this demo, I created a simple CloudFront distribution with a S3 bucket as a region. There is a simple index.html file in that bucket with this content. And let's see what headers we receive from the CloudFront. Just a default set of headers. Now, I would like to add a custom header using CloudFront function. To do that, I need to create the function first. I click on Create Function button. I give a function a name, a demo function for this case. I click Continue. What I see now is a panel of the CloudFront function settings. There are four main steps of function lifecycle. It's a build step, test, publish and associate. Now I will replace this code with my sample code here. Here is my custom header and here is a value for that header. When it's done, I click save. Okay, now I can test my function. Here I can set up a different test, test conditions to make sure that my function works properly. In my case, for this demo, I want to make sure that function response with a header on viewer response trigger. A trigger is an event that executes your function. So I select viewer response as event type. These parameters I'll leave by default and I click test. Response headers. Yeah, it works. Okay, let's see if it works in live. I need to publish my function first, so I click Publish button. Great, it was published. Then I click on Association tab. I select my CloudFront distribution. I select Viewer Response as event type. 
and I select my default cache behavior and I click add association button. Perfect. Now we need to wait some time before CloudFront functions will propagate to the origin. However, we also need to make sure that CloudFront will respond with the new modified requests. So we need to invalidate the cache. Let's do this. Invalidation is in progress. But let's see if it already works, because sometimes it happens very fast. Yep, as you can see, we have this new header set with CloudFront function. It was just a simple demo to showcase the capabilities of CloudFront functions to you. I really hope you will find them useful for your project. Thank you for watching me.